Newcastle United will be back in action this weekend at St James's Park as we welcome Crystal Palace. Uh, the international break is finally almost over and we do have updates on what players will and will not be available. Plenty of injury news coming out over the last few days. One player who will be available is Bruno Gmeres. Um However, he has still made the headlines revolving around his release clause. Um, could he leave for a lower fee if the likes of Barcelona or Real Madrid came in for him? We'll talk about that. Newcastle look like they have a new sponsor coming in as well. Saudi are hinting they could be Newcastle's newest and potentially biggest um, sponsorship deal. And Sandro Tonali. It has been a whirlwind today of Sandro Tonali news on what's going on with his alleged sports betting, alleged not sports betting. Will be will he be available this weekend? Is he facing um, an upcoming ban? It's reported that as many as 40 Italian players are being investigated and the first ban was given out earlier today. So we have Plenty to talk about in today's Tune Tuesdays, uh, your weekly roundup of Newcastle United News, a series that I've been doing for years. Uh, so if you do watch it every week and haven't subscribed yet, hit that big red button and lo loads of you guys watch. We are getting very, very close to 45,000 45, subscribers, which is amazing. So hit the red button or black button or white button, depending on your settings. Um, subscribe. Helps the channel, helps me, and it's free. And if you did want to go that step further, check out my Patreon down in the comments as well. Thanks to um, all my Patrons. Uh, the link is in the description. It's £5 a month. You get behind the scenes, extra videos, and a bloopers video at the pub the other day. And I also did a bit of a um, shirt, football shirt collection video the other day as well, which went down quite well. So go and check out my Patreon. But first, the international break is... Just about coming to a close, England and Italy actually play tonight. And uh, Sandro Tonali won't be there. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But Newcastle do welcome Crystal Palace on Saturday. Then it's Dortmund next Wednesday. Then it's Wolves. Then it's Manchester United in the Cup. It really does feel like a bit of a, a calm before we hit the storm as football returns to Newcastle. But I think it came at a good time. Ah, came at a good time for us. We were on a really good run. Didn't want that to stop. But we have had quite a few injuries and it's given us the chance to rest some players. Wilson had a knock. Ezok had, an, had a knock. We're waiting on Botman. We're waiting on Joe Linton. Well, those four players I've just named there are all in contention to return to Newcastle's lineup this Saturday, which is terrific news. It's, it's almost been at the point where with Wilson having a knock, Ezok having a knock, people talked about January window. Already, who can we bring in to play up front? Eddie Howe actually said in a press conference that he does have Anthony Gordon available to play up front. But he also said he had Jacob Murphy available to play up front as well. So they may be available to do it, but uh, I'd prefer they didn't. So it's great news to hear some players are coming back. I think it's still that little bit longer on Joe Willock. I know a lot of people are excited to see him back as soon as possible. And then obviously you've got the, the likes of, of Harvey Barnes as well, uh, who will still be out for, for quite some time. But good news regarding some key players there that will hopefully be available, not just for Saturday, but for some um, a lot of fixtures coming up thick and fast. Um, someone else who will be available for the weekend is... Dan Byrne, and he will be available for that little bit longer because he has now signed a new contract with the club until 2025. Big up Dan Byrne. Um, I'm happy for him. He deserves it. I think the likes of Trippier, Shaw, Byrne, um, you know, these guys are getting a little bit older, but they're still part of, as of last season, the best defensive team in the league. What's more interesting for me is see how we manage this kind of changing of the guard. Uh, we saw Livermento come in against Man City and have an absolute blinder. We saw Hall come in and did okay as well. We've seen the likes of Lewis Miley coming through. I think it's important to give players like Dan Bird a new deal. I think Trippier's on its way. I think Joe Linton's on its way. We'll talk about Bruno's in a second. What will also be interesting to see is kind of how we interject some of these players. And as we come into this very, very busy period... I think it's important that we that we do get some of these players involved. Interestingly, as we talk about getting young players involved, 
Yakuba Minta. Now, he's been in the headlines as well. The young uh, Gambian uh, winger that we bought at the, in the summer window and loaned straight out to Feyenoord. Now, it's actually being rumoured that Feyenoord want to talk to Newcastle about the option of keeping him full time. On the flip side, there's also a rumour that Newcastle may well look to bring him back early because of some of the injuries issues that we have that we've had. Could that happen? I imagine not on either side. I don't imagine Newcastle would be willing to let him go because of how well he's playing. And as much as we could do with maybe a little bit more depth right now, going from like the Netherlands League to Premier League is a jump. And when he's doing so well right now, we should allow him to flourish and pick him when he's really ripe for it, not try and shoehorn him in too soon. But the good news for us is we're, we are creating depth in players that aren't even in the squad yet. So hopefully in time... That will happen, and as I've said, um, you know, who knows what will happen in the January or the summer window as well. In terms of bringing players in, what I'm hoping doesn't happen in the January or the summer window is the likes of uh, Bruno um, to have a couple of offers on the table. Now, it's understood, and I won't talk too long. If you think I'm talking about Bruno's contract at the moment, wait until we get to the summer window. But it had been rumoured, I think, to be honest, these rumours are coming out from Barcelona and Real Madrid fans, but it was it was said that um, if one of those teams did come in, that Bruno had a different clause that would put his release clause of 100 million down to 80 or 75 or 70, with the idea that those would be the clubs potentially he would want to join in the future. Fabrizio Romano has debunked that and said, no, that isn't true. It is a flat 100 million and it would be the same regardless of whether it's a Spanish team, German team, English team or even uh, a domestic rival. Um, at the end of the day, I don't think that Bruno's going anywhere soon. Having said that, Newcastle got the five-year deal in to create some safety for ourselves. I think Bruno's possibly done it, asked for that 100 million because in three years' time, when he's won the FA Cup and won the League Cup and won the Champions League with Newcastle, he's like, right, it's time to move on now. Barcelona come in, yeah, 100 million, and Newcastle go, ah, no, no, actually, we don't need the money. They come in 200 million, and we go, nope, we are keeping Bruno forever. It's, it's almost like Bruno's kind of opening the, putting his foot in the door if he wanted it and allowing teams to kind of come in. My worry is that this summer window, you know, he wasn't offering 100 million for Bruno. If he plays the way he can do all this season, and we have another, you know, Champions League campaign, top four again or whatever, and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, he's quite well, uh, quite well thought of from a lot of sides. You know, it's rumoured Newcastle turned down 100 million for him from Liverpool this summer. Who knows what we could see coming up very, very soon. One thing that does look like it will be on its way very soon is a new commercial sponsorship for Newcastle United. Uh, Saudi Air posted on their Twitter page earlier on today, stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Um, it looks like Saudi Air will be announced as Newcastle's official flight sponsorship. Um, any, any commercial deals want to come in here and help raise that money pot for the upcoming January Works well for me. Uh, we've seen travel sponsors for the club as we uh, did um, warm weather training over in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and have had these kind of sponsorships in the past. It looks like we have a, a new one on the horizon very soon. Um, we will wait to wait to hear more on that. There's, there's rumours saying that it is could well be very, very lucrative for us. I mean, you go as far as talking about... Um, the Seller Cup at St. James's Park at the start of the season, you know, prize money going to the winner for a friendly tournament. I think the likes of Peter Silverstone and Darren Eels are very clever men at what they do. And if they have the opportunity to try and raise revenue for the club, they're going to do it. I did a video about the fact that the new terrace bar at St. James's Park has mysteriously gone missing. Do you know where it is? If you didn't see that video, you'll know. It's an office. It's an office because they they are trying to build the teams in St James's Park, build those commercial teams in St James's Park, and and to do that they need more staff, um, 
to try and bring in more deals like this one. So we will wait and see on that one. Um, who knows, maybe there'll be a, a few flights to you know Dortmund in two weeks' time or maybe PSG in a, in a month's time. A, a few extra flights on the on the board wouldn't be too bad. So we will uh, wait and he who knows, you know, flights out to, to Riyadh or Riyadh or somewhere like that for, um, some, for some matches for Newcastle. We will wait and see. But... What has been hitting the headlines really all through today is um, talk on Tonali and his alleged gambling, alleged sports betting. Now, this one really has gone from top to bottom and back to front again because really what we are ultimately waiting for is final evidence. At the time of recording this video, it's being reported that Tonali is actually at um, the Federal Prosec Prosecution Office in Italy um, and could potentially have his sentencing before I've, I've finished this video. Um, it's all kind of come through the back of uh, Tenali being sent home from the Italy squad. <laughs> I was actually at the airport at the time that news came out. No, I didn't see him come back. It was reported again today that Tenali was actually rejoining with Newcastle for training and his agent has said that he would be available for the game this weekend. Now that's come back to front again because it's now being reported that as I say he's in Italy at the Federal Prosecution Office. So it's, it's lots of reports, it's lots of me using the words allegedly because of the fact this is an ongoing case but it is um, reported that as many as 40 Italian players are now being looked at and the first ban has allegedly now been given out to the Juventus player uh, Fagioli. Uh, the Juventus player seven month ban has been give it, given to him which has led people to believe that T Tonali could receive a, receive a similar ban. Um, as I've said already, it really comes down to this kind of line. Tonali has reportedly um, kind of stepped forward on this and to, to give, um, I guess just come out and tell tell the, the truth about it, which is, it, which is reportedly going to hopefully give him a, a lower sentencing if a sentencing is to be given. Um, but really where the line kind of sits is, for a start, um, Gambling in Italy is uh, far stricter than it is over here. Now, sports gambling is, is 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 still very very strict in both sets, but Italy can be as strict as you were playing a game of cards on a train with your friend or a game of poker on the train. That that is illegal. There is I don't know exactly what the rules are here to be honest, but I think it is extremely frowned upon in Italy certainly. And what's being reported at the moment is that Tonali has come forward, spoken with family, spoken about his um. His addiction to gambling, so he is, he is trying to be very um, f f forthright on, on what's happened. And it's being reported that he was using uh, online websites to gamble on roulette and uh, blackjack. Now, that, that as I say, that, that's where the evidence kind of ends as to what we know. If it is to then be found that it was, in fact, sports betting, that's when it kind of steps over that line. And, and we have to wait out on what happens next. Reports coming out literally this morning were saying that things were looking good for Tenali. He was back in training. He was going to be available this weekend. It was actually reported that the English FA stepped in and said that he is available for selection this weekend. Not to say it's the same because it is very, very different, but the Ivan Tony case, we saw him play for Brentford for quite a long time before a um, decision was actually reached it was thought that that could be a very similar situation with Tonali, that he would continue to be available, I guess, innocent until proven guilty. But it, literally within a morning to an evening, it's now being said that because the first ban has been handed to an Italian player, it's reported that we could potentially see more news come out on that quite, quite quickly. And if it was a seven-month ban, that would be... Tonali up till the end of the season so you let me know your thoughts on the Tonali situation down in the comments below it is really one that we're just kind of having to watch and see what happens as I've said if I'd done this video this morning it would have been completely different because the reports this morning were saying that things were looking up and that it could be okay as of this evening things have changed very quickly again promising thing is is that nothing has been revealed as to exactly what's happened yet Positives are that we've got a bunch of players coming back from injury, so hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll continue depth as this is ongoing, and hopefully 
you know, we'll, this will come out with, with good news rather than rather than the latter. But you let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know your thoughts on everything discussed in today's video. Thanks for watching Toon Tuesdays, guys. I will be back later this week to do a full preview ahead of the Palace game. Hopefully, we can have the likes of a Tonali play this Saturday. And then, honestly, it's just going to be like a rocket over the next two weeks because I'm going to be at Palace. I'm going to be at Dortmund. I'm hoping to be at Wolves as well. I'm hoping to be at Manchester United for the Cup game as well. Lots and lots of football. So stay in tune, subscribe, don't miss any future videos. And as I say, if you want some behind the scenes and extra content, check out my Patreon. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy your Tuesday, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll catch you later.